Hello my friends, have you ever wondered about the origin of aquariums? Don't go anywhere, we're going to tell you all about it. Welcome to PSK Aqua. Rick, today we're going to talk about something that probably never crossed your mind. The origin of the aquarium. Did you know it wasn't always a glass box like we know today? What do you mean? So, what were they made of before? Cardboard boxes? <laughs> of course not, cardboard wouldn't be possible. The first evidence of people keeping fish dates back to around 3000 uh, before Christ. By the rivers Tigris and Euphrates in Mesopotamia, the Sumerians built ponds for food. They noticed that watch fish swimming was therapeutic, which was really ahead of their time. Wow, 3000 BC, my god. That was about 5,024 years ago! Exactly, it was a long time ago, but it was the Egyptians who took the fish keeping to the next level, around 1,700 before Christ. They create clay tanks with a glass front, which we can think of as the first step towards modern aquariums. These tanks allow them to observe fish behavior. What? Pharaohs had goldfish swimming in the pyramids. Did they put jewels at the bottom for status? But the Egyptians sure knew how to build things. Just look at the pyramids. There weren't goldfish yet, but the Egyptians kept the tilapia in those clay tanks. These were mostly for food and rituals, but they also enjoy watching the fish swim. Did you know uh, that tilapia was a symbol of regeneration and life for them? And they only use the fish for food and rituals. Mostly yes, but as I said, they enjoy observing the fish movements. Egyptian priests could predict the Nile's floods and dry seasons by watching fish behavior, which helps with the local agriculture. They were really ahead of their time. That's right. As people become more fascinated by fish, these tanks become part of decoration in temples and palaces. They even create artificial ponds with fish and river plants like papyrus and water lilies. This was the start of studying things like light and other details important for modern fish keeping. Sure, they probably watched the fish swim and thought, wow, I feel reborn, or maybe I'm just getting hungry. Probably more like that. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Egyptians had a deep connection with the Nile, and watching fish was a way to connect with the river. But of course, back then aquariums were only for the rich and powerful people. Of course, like everything in those days, the rich got aquariums, and everyone else didn't. If you weren't powerful, no chance you'd have an aquarium. Exactly, but that was just the beginning in ancient Egypt. It was the Chinese, who really took things to the next level. The Chinese? What do they have to do with the Egyptians? That was in another era. While the Sumerians and Egyptians play important roles, it was the Chinese who truly popularized fish keeping. First during the Tang Dynasty and later in the Ming Dynasty, around the 6th century. In the Ming Dynasty, fish keeping became very popular. In 1596, the first book on the subject was published. His name is The Book of the Goldfish, written by, I don't know how to pronounce it this, but Chang Chiang Tang. Wow, they even wrote a book about fish. I love to read it, but I don't understand Mandarin. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> but yes, they wrote it and it was very popular. By the 9th century, uh, they start breeding ornamental carp in ponds. Did you know that our famous goldfish came from this carp? Really? I can see the resemblance between goldfish and carp. So, Mr. Goldfish is kind of a celebrity in China. A VIP fish? I'd say it's so famous worldwide, it's a VIP fish everywhere, not just in China. The Chinese breath uh, these carps uh, to get brighter colors, 
goldfish become symbols of good luck and started being kept not just in pounds but in large containers, which was almost the start of aquariums we know today. Let me guess, even back then, people asked in Facebook groups, hey, do you have a filter in that pond? Or how often do you change the water? Or my fish is sick, water parameters are fine. What can I do? <laughs> Facebook groups in 9th century. Only you to say that. <laughs> Speaking of social networks, have you followed us yet? And have you subscribed to the channel? Do it, it's free and means a lot to us. Go, subscribe. <laughs> but back to our story. At that time, ponds were big enough to maintain a natural balance. It was kind of a pre aquarium, already considering uh, the idea of keeping fish in smaller spaces. And, as with everything, there was an evolution, and the next step came from their Japanese neighbors. In Japan, the colorful ko koi carp appeared. They were initially kept in ornamental ponds, and even today they're symbol of status and beauty. Yeah, because nothing says style like a colorful carp swimming calmly in your yard. It must have been the ancient version of owning a sports car. Don't you think? That's a good analogy, Rick. In ancient times, having koi fish was a sign of wealth. The rich would build huge ponds and keep the koi as living trophies. And so fish keeping for enjoyment began to grow. Exactly. Koi carp are stunning and bring a sense of calm and peace. No wonder people wanted them in their yards. That's right, Rick. The calm that fish brings made people want to bring aquariums into their homes. But do you know who finally managed to bring the aquarium concept home? No, tell me, I'm really curious. Now let's fast forward to the 19th century in London. Here's where things get interesting. It was around this time that the aquarium, as we know it today, started to take shape. Ah, finally, out of the Stone Age and into real aquariums. Who came up with this brilliant idea? It was a British natural scientist named Philip Henry Goose. He was the first to recreate a saltwater environment at home, in a glass aquarium with marine plants and fish. In 1854, he wrote a book called The Aquarium, an unveiling uh, of wonders of the deep sea. His work sparked uh, the aquarium craze in Victorian England. At first, the term of an aquarium was supposed to be aquatic vivarium, but he thought that sounded hot, uh, so he shortened it into the word as we all know today, the aquarium. So this Philip guy thought, you know, what would be cool? A piece of the ocean in my living room. And boom, the aquarium was born. I bet they didn't have lead lights or filters back then, right? <laughs> Nothing like that. Everything was made manually. They used plants and even algae to help oxygenate the water, and the fish had to adapt to the environment. But the idea paved uh, the way for the aquarium hobby to become popular. And he just created a small aquarium at home and became famous like that? No, Rick. Goose created and stocked the first public aquarium at the London Zoo in 1853. Can you imagine the work it, it took to build a display aquarium at the zoo with the limited resources they had back then? Yeah, it must have been a huge effort. But things had to evolve for them to take off. What happened next? Did people line up to visit the London Zoo? Yes, they probably did. It was a massive attraction. After that, the hobby spread across Europe. By the late 19th and early uh, 20th centuries, the first public aquariums start to appear like the Zoological Society Aquarium in London. It was a real craze. Wait, there were public aquariums. Like, people went to the aquarium the way they go to the movies today. Exactly, it was a big attraction. And over time, technology improved as well. In the early 20th century, the first filters and heaters appeared, 
which make life easier for fish keepers. Finally, I was already imagining the queen asking her butler, James, go fetch some firewood to heat my aquarium. <laughs> okay. Uh, but with the progress of science, aquarists uh, start to understand the nitrogen cycle better and the importance of keeping a balanced environment for the fish. Nowadays, we have aquariums in all shapes and sizes with super advanced equipments, filters, lightings, CO2 systems and even automation that does almost everything for you. It has become a hobby accessible to everyone. Automation? So you don't even need to get your hands wet now? The fish take care of themselves? why you still have to do something <laughs> but technology uh, helps a lot we have thermostats that keep the water at the right temperature filters that keep the water crystal clear and hold beneficial bacteria for the nitrogen cycle lights that simulates day and, day and night and even systems that feed the fish when you're not around. The hobby has evolved so much that there are larger expos and aquascaping competitions where people display their aquariums like works of art. It's a true global community. Aquascaping? Is that when you turn your aquarium into a Lord of the Rings scene? With mountains, rivers, and dragons? Sort of, but without the dragons. <laughs> Uh, aquascaping is the art of decorating the aquarium, recreating natural landscapes underwater or even specific biotopes. There are international competitions and aquarists take this very seriously. Wow, this is way more than just fish. It's a whole world in there. Exactly. And that's uh, what makes the hobby so fascinating. From the ancient Sumerians to today, the aquarium has been a window into the underwater world. Okay, I'm convinced. If the pharaohs and scientists could do it, why can't I have an aquarium full of exotic fish and crazy plants? You can, of course, Rick. But remember, with aquarium comes responsibilities. It's not just filling it with water and expecting the fish to fend for themselves. We can't forget that they are living beings under our care. We have the duty to provide the best conditions for them to live healthily. Right. We've got to take good care of them. We can't forget that they're stuck in a glass box and depend on us for everything, even with all the technology helping. Exactly, Rick. And who knows, maybe in 100 years, they'll be talking about Rick, the aquarium visionary. I bet I'll have Martian fish. <laughs> That's so you, Rick. Who knows? The future is unknown. But given how aquaristics has evolved, I'm sure it will only get easier to have an aquarium at home. And that's it, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this trip through time. Did you know about the history of aquariums? Leave your comment below. And if you haven't already, gives a big like, share and subscribe to help keep the channel going. Thank you for your support and I'll see you in the next video.